I'd like this to be a meaningful experience. For two reasons, I think this can be meaningful. But for the most important, besides for these two reasons, I think it's important to understand that Am Israel is one family. And that when we are fighting terrorism, and when we're going through it, it's our family that are going through it. It's not just another Jew who lives far away from me. I think it's important to understand, to change the mindset of what soldiers are going through to keep our country, our country safe, to understand what's happening on a daily basis. You know, it's happened many times, just to put you in the picture, that I, on a Friday night, I'm sitting down with my family. My house is awesome. There's a delicious smell, freshly baked color. There's a white tablecloth, the candles are burning. My kids are quiet for the first time, they love Shabbat. We sing Shalom Aleichem, which welcomes in the angels. And then I got a custom, I got each one of my kids, I give them a blessing, I give them a bracha. The custom is always to start with the oldest. As I place my hand on Gabi's head, Gabriel, I get activated from the command center. I don't have time to finish his blessing. I don't have time to go to each one of my kids and tell them how much I love them. I grab my weapon and I run out of that house as fast as possible. Do you know, my kids have stopped asking me where I go. I cannot tell them what I do. I don't tell them where I'm going. All I tell them is that I'm Israel's in danger. They have I had to go help. When I get back from the terrorist attack, my kids are all asleep. My wife is waiting up for me. She knows what I do. She knows where I've been. She knows that there are only two possibilities coming through that door. Either it's me or Chas Khalila, God forbid. A uniformed soldier, his job is to inform families that their husbands, their children, their brothers are not coming home. Every time I walk into my home after a terrorist attack, I can see the relief in my wife's eyes that it's me and that I'm safe. And then I go into the room of my kids. I place my hand on their head and I give them their bracha. You see, that night the Ribbono Shalolam gave me a bracha. He made me a bracha that although I ran towards the gunfire, I came home safe to my family. I don't take that for granted, not for a single second. So I think if I got a bracha, I should just pay it forward to my kids. When you visit us over here, I think there's two very important lessons that you can learn. The number one is, I wish I could tell you, I wish I could tell you that there was no terrorism in the world, but that's a joke. I wish I could also tell you that terrorism was only here in Israel. Yes, it is true. The forefront of terrorism has been here for the last 50 years and it's continued to be here. But terrorism is a problem everywhere. I don't want to make you paranoid, but you need to know that terrorism is a problem in your country. If I can leave you with one message, that's please look after your communities. Look out for one another. You see something that's suspicious. You see someone, be proactive. I had an amazing commander. He taught me that there are two types of people in the world. People are part of the problem and people are part of the solution. Please make sure that you guys are part of the solution. Make sure you are keeping your community safe. Guys, I do this for one reason. I want to make the world a safer place. With your help, we can make that happen. Be aware in an air force. Be aware when you're praying, you're governing in shul. Wherever you are, be aware so we can keep our family safe. That's number one. The second reason I believe a program like this is important is I'm going to ask you for your help in another area. Not only in the fight against terrorism in our communities, but the fight of terrorism that happens in the media. You probably understand now I'm from South Africa with my accent. My wife is Canadian. We spent five years of Shlikut in Sydney, Australia. Everywhere I've gone in the world, I turn on the television, the newspapers, the radios. You know what they say about me, an Israeli soldier? They say that I'm an animal and a barbarian. They say that I love killing little Palestinian children. You guys have an opportunity to meet us, elite soldiers over here. Go and ask any one of them why they do that. I can talk in their names, I guarantee you. We don't do this because we love killing. We don't do this because we're filled with hate. In fact, the exact opposite. We're filled with a deep, deep sense of love. We love this country. We love the people who live here and the people who come and visit, maybe to have a wedding. You see, I don't really care what's written in any of your passports. Right, United States of America, it's a piece of paper. I want you to know this ground that you're standing on, where you're sitting now, this is your home. I don't care if you were born here. I don't care if you don't speak the language. This has been a Jewish home for more than 2,000 years. This is your home. I've got a principle that when a Jew comes home, they should be safe. Because if you're not going to be safe in your own home, then where will you feel safe? I want you to come home so you can go to the hotel and touch the stones on the walls where heaven meets earth. And I want you to feel safe doing that. I want you to come here to learn Torah. 
because ki mitzion tetzei Torah. That's where it's from. This is the source. I want you to come and go to a mall or a restaurant. I don't care what you do. But whatever you do here in Eretz Israel, in your home, you should do it feeling safe. That's what motivates me. I wish I could tell you that the terrorists, my enemy, are also motivated by a sense of love. I don't pretend to know what other people are feeling. But my sense is that terrorists are not motivated by love. Maybe you guys heard of a terrorist attack. A little family in Itamar, the Fogel family, were asleep on a Shabbat. On Shabbos, they're in their beds, two terrorists break in with knives, they kill a whole family while they were asleep. You know, these terrorists managed to escape into a nearby Arab village. There they were so proud of what they did. They went into the middle of the village, they showed the knife that they used, the blood on their hands. The whole family while they were asleep. You know, these terrorists managed to escape into a nearby Arab village. There they were so proud of what they did. They went into the middle of the village, they showed the knife that they used, the blood on their hands. There. They had a secret undercover agent, an Israeli, living as an Arab. He heard what they said, he verified the information, he gave us their location. Sting operation. Israel went in and we arrested these two terrorists. We took them back to the Fogel family house. Why did we take them back there? For one reason and one reason only. Because we messed up. Our nation has learned two words and a hard one. Those words, never again. My unit will not allow a family to go to bed at night and be afraid that a terrorist is going to come in and slice them to pieces. We wanted there, these two terrorists to reenact the attack to show us what we had done wrong, why we couldn't save this family. <coughs> you think they wanted to cooperate with us, show us what they did? These terrorists were only too pleased. In fact, they wanted to show us every single detail of how they slaughtered this family with a smile on their face. They went into the house, they had knives of rubber. Went into the first bedroom, it was horrific. There's blood on the floor and the beds on the walls. The terror showed us where he stood as he plunged the knife down into the mattress. They went from room to room, killing an entire family. When they were done, they left the house. It was when they were outside, they heard a baby crying. Little Hadassi was three months old. Her parents could not respond to her crying because they were in Olam Haba. But these terrorists realized that they had left the Jew behind. Following the crying of this baby, these sh terrorists showed us how they went into the house for a second time. They walked down the corridor until they found Hadassi in her room. The second one held the little girl still so she wouldn't move. When the other one took a knife and slit her throat. But I turn on the television and they call me an animal and a barbarian. They call me a killer. And what do they call these terrorists? They're called victims, freedom fighters. You guys had an opportunity to meet us. Please take a message back to your communities. You want to know a little bit about me? You can ask any of the instructors over here about themselves. Me? Yes. I want to be in one minute of the gunshots. This medic must be Elia Wanavi. I don't know how he got to him so fast. I saw him treating him. I then looked around and I saw a soldier, a 19 year old young man. He was white, shaking. It's the first laugh he's ever taken. I went to him and I said, I think call la cabot. well done. You protected our nation today, but our job's not over. We have to secure the area. We made a huge circle around the, uh, the whole area where all the soldiers were coming, the medics were coming. We made the whole area secure, facing outwards, and more soldiers came. Our circle got bigger and stronger. And once I saw that the circle was good, my commanding officer, the Sam Khat of the Khatmar Etzion and I went up to him and I said to him what had happened, I gave him a debrief and then I said to him afterwards, do you mind if I go? He said, what do you, do you want to go? Where do you want to go? I said, oh, I want to go home. He said, Steve, there's a terrorist attack. I have to explain to you, we need you over here. What do you mean you want to go home? I said, you don't understand, my kids are in the car. He said, Steve, you brought your kids to a terrorist attack? Get out of here! I must tell you, when I was running to that car, the only thing I was thinking in my head was to give my kids a cuddle. I flung the door open, I looked inside the car and I saw two kids with the biggest smiles on their faces. They were eating candies, smiling, giggling. I realized when I opened that door, I found five babysitters that looked after my kids. I looked to my son, Nathan, I said, you weren't scared? Not even a little bit. He said, Abba, I got scared once. When I heard all the ambulances, I saw the lights, I thought for sure, Ma Abba, 
is going to go inside that ambulance. And he's hurt. So I told one of the girls that I was scared. So she took out her phone and she found Tehillim. And in my car, she said, we, he said, we said Tehillim together. And you see how it worked, because you're back and you're safe. What country in the world can you leave your kids with complete strangers? And when they get scared, they start saying Tehillim together. Me, Ka'am Ka Yisrael, who's like our nation is. I want to say thank you for being with us during this time, this Akhdut, standing with us. Me, Ka'am Ka Yisrael. Thank you, guys. Blood on some grass. The third week was horrific. They were asking us to look for body parts. I truly believe that I'm Israel's one family. And when I was in that forest, I was looking for the body parts of my own children. At night, you're not allowed to search. You'll destroy clues. So I do what I do every night. I go and do daf yomi. I went to my bed midrash to learn. It was closed. I couldn't believe it. The guys I normally learn with, there's a locked door, lights off. I found a little note on the door. It said we moved. I found the guys that I normally learn daf yomi had set up a table at the bus stop where those three boys were kidnapped. There on the table was the Gemara. They were doing daf yomi using the street lights. When I saw this driving up, I thought to myself, people who care, come closer. I must tell you, seeing all of you over here in Israel now, where on average there's two terrorist attacks every single day, but you guys came, shows me this principle. People who care, come closer. I want to say a big thank you for being here. Show your support for Am Israel to be here with us during this time. You know, it's easy being in Israel. Go to all these holy places when uh, times are great. It's hard to be with your nation when time, times are difficult. But you guys have stood up to that challenge. You're here now with us. You're standing with your nation. And I cannot tell you what it means for me as a soldier to see people putting their faith in us and in the Kodesh Baruch Hu, that you're here in Eretz HaKodesh and you're visiting, uh, you're visiting and showing your support for us. So thank you for being here. If I can end off, and this is my final. Just a month and a half ago, I went to pick up my twins. I got a boy and a girl twin, my only girl, got four boys and one girl. Eitan and Tali are my twins, they're terrible at English. It's me, I'm lazy, I speak to them in Hebrew. So I was taking them, I picked them up, my wife asked me if I can leave Kola and go and pick them up to take them for extra English. As I'm driving out of their school, I see five young ladies, 18 years old, hitchhike, out of a religious school in the Gush Etzion. I picked them all up, I've got a big car, you can see my van down there. And I stick them in and I'm driving towards El Azar. These young girls need to go to Tzomet Gush, the Gush Etzion Junction. As we get there, I'm at the traffic circle just across the road from Gush Etzion Junction. I hear three gunshots, boom, boom, boom. I turn my head and I look where the bus stop is and I see that a terrorist has taken his car and plowed it onto the people that were standing there. I immediately took my car over the sidewalk, drove straight over the traffic circle, parked my car behind a guard post, which is a huge cement structure to protect the car. I grabbed my weapon, 